It's almost out. So hi, I'm Nicole Zampieri. Um, I'm a PhD candidate at FSU, um, working in the geography department with Dr. Stephanie Powell. My PhD research focuses on understanding the gender ecology of longleaf pines, um, investigating patterns in their growth and demographics um, across natural communities in Florida. And today I'm here on Helen Roth's property, uh, Spring Canyon, where we're gonna be coring some of her trees so that we can learn a little bit about their age and some of their history. Like we're trying to look at um, a history of logging and maybe we can find out when when this site was was logged prior to her ownership of it so what i'm going to do now is demonstrate how we core a tree and so what i have in my hands is an increment bore um, this is a piece of equipment um, that we use to actually get the sample from the tree um, and i will show you how we use it so let me put this down for a second um, so it's made up of three parts so this is the handle the shaft and then the spoon so this is um, a really sharp pointed blade with uh, three blades around um, that we use to actually core into the tree. We lock it into place like this. And so uh, to core into the tree, I'll wanna put my spoon somewhere on the tree so I don't lose it. Um, and now I need to look for a good place to core into. I'm gonna core into a fissure here because it'll be easier to get started. So getting it started is the hardest part. You have to apply consistent pressure without wobbling it. You wanna be parallel to the ground um, so that you get a perfect perpendicular um, cross section of the tree. Okay, I can feel that it's caught now. So once it's caught with that bit, you don't have to apply pressure anymore. You just put Okay. Um, so I'm going to measure it from the side to see that it looks like we've passed the pith of the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Taking it out, I put in my spoon upside down, push it in all the way, half turn back, and then we're going to extract the core and check it out. Oh, so it looks like it might there might be pieces stuck in there. I can tell you. Oh, but. it neatly okay so what we're looking at here is the core that we just extracted from this tree and so here we have the bark and we're looking at the individual tree rings on from this tree we know um, each ring represents one year of growth and so what I'll be able to do from looking at this after processing it is tell you um, how much how much the tree actually grew each year so when was a good year when was a bad year and from that we can infer things about like um, uh, climate growth relationships. So did it like, did it grow a lot in a really wet year or a really hot year? Um, we're also able to tell things like when there was a disturbance history around the trees, which is something that we're interested at this site. So um, if there was logging, which we know historically occurred, um, we'll be able to see that evidence in the tree rings um, by seeing increased growth, right? Because when they logged, they, there was a release in the canopy that allowed the tree to have more resources. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is store this core um, in a straw for safekeeping until I can take this back to the lab uh, to process it for analysis. And what you see here, let me pull this out so you can see it, is the pith of the tree. So we did get, we're close to the pith. We didn't exactly get the pith, but you can see what we call um, the sunrise. And that indicates that we're, we've reached the center of the tree. So it, during, at post logging it, oh yeah, because it looks slightly smaller before that. Right. And so something happened right here. Yeah. And it could have been a hurricane or logging. Um, and it cleared the canopy so yep. it grew And faster. then they stopped burning. Yep. And this is hardwood encroachment. Yep. Okay, cool. Proper tool maintenance. <laughs> Golf tees and WD-40. Unless it was recently cat faced, but this is definitely not recent. Yeah. Um, so the cat face is a sign of age because people have not been cat facing for turpentine for around 100 years. Correct, yes. And that's your evidence of turpentine. There's 
the little guide that would guide the um, mm -hmm. turpentine into the pot, and this is Here the scar. Here the nail holes oh, yeah. for holding the hurdy pot. And then you have a and bird's nest There's a little bird's nest, nest up there. <laughs> and then keep going and look at how the branches are wrapping around the adjacent one. Yeah. So this is my tree hugger, cat face. <laughs> Love it. So here we are looking at what is a baby longleaf pine right next to some wire grass. You can see how similar they are, how hard it would be to tell it apart um, without paying attention. And I'm just estimating, uh, guesstimating here that this longleaf is anywhere between one and three years old, maybe even four, but you can, you can see the new year's growth popping up over here. It looks, it looks like a little skirt. And so this is the grass stage. Yes, where it looks exactly like grass. And then what <laughs> happens after the grass stage? So grass stage, oh, we have some good examples of bolting pines right over there. So grass stage, this is a very, very young grass stage. Eventually they, they are more robust. I would like to find a... So what we're looking at here is a long leaf that has, it's beginning what's called bolting. So what we just saw was the grass stage when they're really low to the ground. Um, the reason for that growth habit is to protect what's up here, the apical meristem. So this is where the tree will actually grow from. These long, long needles are designed to protect it from fire as those low growing fires creep over the landscape. This is a longleaf pine that is bolting. Really hard to guess how old these are. They can be really, they can actually stay in the grass stage for anywhere up to 20 years. So um, it's really hard to tell. Um, they're opportunistic bolters just when the conditions are right. And so they go from what you see here to here what we have are more juvenile, juvenile age only um, that are growing up into young teenagers.